Good morning. Welcome to Leon County today with Sheriff Walt McNeil. I'm Sean Denight and Sheriff, uh, we are in that festive time of year. Festive time of year indeed. Uh, at that time of year we, we're cheerful, we're glad for family and unfortunately we also in that time of year when tragedies happen. I, I was sharing with our staff uh, this week in fact that uh, we want to be you know uh, observing the holidays and being cheerful and and enjoying ourselves, but at the same time, we've got to make sure that we take care of ourselves, and mm -hmm. and we're particularly when we're driving. That's one of the things that happens each and every year. I can almost count on the fact that somebody out there will be drinking and driving, celebrating the holidays, and doing it to the extreme, right. and putting all of us at risk. And that's something we want to talk about today: is how can we eliminate the possibility of any any one of us individually becoming that key event mm -hmm. that drives our community into some tragic situation. So today we're going to talk about drunk driving and how to prevent drunk driving. And, and that I believe this time of year is particularly important. Absolutely. There are all of the holiday festivities happening. And, you know, I think a lot of times uh, when people see our deputies out on the road patrolling and pulling people over for speeding or other things, um, sometimes they feel it's a nuisance, but that is really how we help to keep this under control um, is being out there and making sure that our deputies are watching for anyone who's not uh, adhering to the rules of the road. Yeah, there, there are so much, uh, so much uh, that's taken place in, in, in the holiday season. So many drivers out there. We don't realize there are new drivers out there. There are drivers who uh, are sometimes not as attentive as they should be mm -hmm. because they're in the festive mood. And we all have a responsibility to our community to do the best we can to make sure we take care of ourselves yeah and make sure we take care of others. And we're gonna have a long conversation today about uh, how and what citizens can do in terms of trying to make sure this, this holiday season goes on without there being that accident occurs that uh, just takes it away from all of us. And uh, you know, today we're gonna have uh, our guests from Mothers Against Drunk Driving, and this is such a big part of their mission. And, and they've really done a lot of work um, in the way of educating people on alternatives. Yes, they, they've come a long way. I can remember as a uh, young uh, police officer myself many years ago, and I guess they'll talk about how many years ago, uh, when they first came into existence and what impact they made in our community and around the country, quite honestly, they've made a tremendous difference in how we go about uh, making sure that people are accountable when they get behind the wheel of a car. Yeah, very important uh, discussion we're going to have here today. So we want to make sure you stick around. Drunk driving is a 100% preventable crime. Coming up, an important message from Mothers Against Drunk Driving. Good morning, this is Deputy Gaffin with the Leon County Sheriff Office Traffic Unit, and this is your Crime Tip Tuesday. It's the holiday season and there will be an increase in opportunities to give back to those who are less fortunate. While the spirit of giving is an excellent one to have, we should approach certain charities with caution. When donations are solicited online or over the phone, research the credibility of the charity you are considering. When receiving phone solicitations, don't act immediately. You are entitled to request and receive information about the charity in writing before donating. Verify the charitable organization is registered with the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services by visiting www.floridaconsumerhelp.com. You can also file complaints about possible fraud by contacting the Florida Office of the Attorney General by visiting www.myfloridalegal.com. And that is your crime tip. Have a good day. Remember, all in. Start your new career as a corrections officer at one of the state's most innovative agencies, the Leon County Sheriff's Office. When I left the academy, my training never stopped. Work with state-of-the-art technology. You can make a lot of money at a very young age. Starting pay is $50,000 a year with amazing benefits. Firearms, taser, driving training. A better work-life balance with more time off. They're going to sponsor you through the academy and pay you while you're there. Join the family. Apply today at LeonCountySO.com. The Leon County Sheriff's Office is the proud recipient of the 2023 International Association of Chiefs of Police SIMC Leadership and Law Enforcement Research Award for their groundbreaking work on the anatomy of a homicide research project. This award recognizes law enforcement agencies that demonstrate excellence in conducting and using research to improve police operations and public safety. The Anatomy of a Homicide Research Project, a commitment to understanding crime, developing strategies based on evidence, and ultimately shaping a safer Leon County. Congratulations to Sheriff Walt McNeil and the dedicated team at the Leon County Sheriff's Office for setting the standard in law enforcement research. Welcome back. The holidays are about creating memories 
not tragedies. Join us now with more on that important message from Mothers Against Drunk Driving, Claudia Licata. Tell us about Mothers Against Drunk Driving and exactly uh, what do you guys do and how long you've been doing it? Well, thank you so much for always inviting me during the holidays. We started back in the 80s when a mother lost a child, a 13-year-old walking back from a church event due to a drunk driver. Many years later, in 2023, we're all over 50 states and also Puerto Rico, and our mission has stayed the same to end drunk driving. Now, you've been doing that for many, many years. So tell us, what exactly are you guys engaged in? How, what is Mothers Against Drunk Drivers and how do you operate? So we do th several things. First, we support the victims of these crimes, whether you have a family member that was killed or injured, uh, we help them through the court system. And then we also have the prevention side where we go to schools and we talk to adults about the dangers of impaired driving, also underage drinking. So our message is very clear. Um, if you drink, don't drive, and it's 100% preventable. So we want people, we want a future of no more victims of drunk driving. So you're telling us that there, there are options out there for people not to actually drink and drive. So uh, how often are we seeing in our community or around the country uh, incidents of people drinking and driving and having accidents? So every 79 seconds wow. in the United States, somebody is either killed or injured by an impaired driver, which is 100% preventable. It's a choice. We choose to get behind the wheel impaired. And there's so many options to get there safely. We can take a Uber or Lyft, we can do, which is a ride share service, we can take public transportation in those places that are available. We can call a friend, have a sober designated driver. And if you're hosting a party, make sure you have that sofa ready if somebody needs to stay over. Yeah, you know, I, I've heard and my deputies encounter these situations all the time. Uh, impaired driving isn't just from alcohol. There are other circumstances and other uh, things out there that people are taking and driving. Talk about some of those and what's the impacts out there. So when they say think people impair is alcohol, but now we have marijuana and some people do have that um, license that they're able to consume marijuana, but it's still illegal to drive impaired on their uh, marijuana. We also have pres prescription pills where people think that they can, because you know, the doctors sign off on the pill, they can drive um, with them and you can be impaired by prescription pills. So anything, there's a big saying um, with NHTSA that if you feel different, you're going to drive different. So it's very important that if you feel different, you are not gonna drive. That's interesting. I'm, I'm, and, and marijuana plays a big role in that as well, I su suspect. Uh, but there are also, we don't think about this, but uh, there, are s there are some situations where people are, are intoxicated that are pedestrians out there. Uh, what can we talk about? What can we tell our audience about persons who are, who are pedestrians who are involved in uh, drunk driving and, and causing wrecks in our community. So actually that's one of our holiday campaigns. We are pushing that cyclists and pedestrians are also can be victims of impaired driving. So we think that when there's an imp impaired driving crash, there's two cars, but there's so, just happened a month ago that an alleged um, impaired driver killed a 25 year old FSU student. So it is, and he was a cyclist. So it's very important to mm. know that pedestrians and cyclists, they are w using the roads, they're cycling, and they can be injured by an impaired driver. Anybody on the road, whether you're a car, you're crossing the street, or you're just doing a ride, you can be impacted by impaired driving. Claudia, well, that's a lot of good information for our viewers out there. Uh, I can't say enough about Mothers Against Drunk Drivers and what you're doing in, in our community and across the, across the state. Still ahead, Support for victims of impaired driving. More on the resources available. Stay tuned. Domestic violence knows no faith. One in four women experiences abuse in their relationship. So most likely, there are victims of abuse in your congregation. Don't think it doesn't happen in your church. Or synagogue. Or mosque. Because it does. It does. It does. Learn the signs of abuse. And how to help victims. Know the many resources available in our community. In the silence on domestic violence. Contact the Domestic Violence Coordinating Council or the Refuge House Hotline. We're back with Claudia Machata with Mothers Against Drunk Driving. Claudia, there is no reason for any person to get behind the wheel impaired today. What can you tell us instead? What can they do instead of getting behind the wheel? You can do many things. If you're hosting a party, which the holidays are here, you can have mocktails, which are non-alcoholic beverages that you can give to people. You can um, volunteer as a designated sober driver. So the designated driver is not the one that you know drank the least. 
is the one that is not drinking at all. So you can volunteer that or take turns as friends. Um, if you're hosting a party, you can have a guest room available, sofa, to, you know, sometimes people had a couple of drinks. You don't want, as the host of the party, to, you're responsible for those people who are getting home. Um, you can plan ahead. I say the same way for, for ladies and girls that are planning the outfits, the makeup, all that fun <laughs> stuff. We have to plan how we get home, and we have that. We make that plan before we go out, not okay. after a couple of shots. So you can do that. You can plan whether you're going to take a taxi, uh, public transportation. There's so many. I mean, how many times we plan the Christmas presents, our outfits, our outings? Then we're going to plan how we're going to get home, and that way you're going to save lives. You're going to protect your sa yourself and your friends. You're talking about uh, all the things that they can do in getting prepared. Let's say they, they do all those things, get prepared, and go out, not intentional, but find themselves uh, inebriated, uh, drinking too much. Are there, you got a, a hotline. How does that hotline work and how does it help in those circumstances? Well, we have a 24-7 hotline number that usually assists the victims. If you are in a situation that you were in a crash or you just you recently lost someone, you can call and we have victim advocates available. But I do know that during the holidays, usually AAA offers uh, free ride homes. Um, sometimes rideshare apps will offer a free ride home. I always think to have a that friend or that family member that, again, you were not planning to drink, but you have drinks, who are you gonna call? It should be like on your you know, speed dial. Or I have you know, a lot of law enforcement uh, friends that I'm pretty sure that they call a law enforcement agency and they'll get a ride. It's very important. There's no, um, there's no room for error. In a split second, in less than a half a mile, you can be either get a DUI or you can um, injure someone or even kill yourself. And for us, this year our campaign is called, it's, be, it's called Together because we want to celebrate the holidays together. And together kind of also says to get there. So we're going to get there safe. We want to have that Christmas dinner, um, in, my in my case, Noche Buena uh, dinner, to have every family member in that table and not lose someone because of a choice that we made. Wow, wow. You, you're talking about uh, the impaired driver and uh, what steps you're taking, but uh, you're also doing something to commemorate those persons who've lost their lives uh, in situations where someone's impaired. Talk about that initiative and, and exactly how does that work and how do people get in contact with Mothers Against Drunk Driver if they want to participate in that process. Yes, so we have two things going on in the holidays. We have a virtual candlelight vigil where you can go online, mad.org, and then you can submit the person that, that you lost, like a friend or family member. You can put all the information and you can either, you know, dedicate that virtual candlelight um, and light a candle. You can uh, write a poem, you can write a message to them, and it's going to be showcased on our social media. And it's a national campaign. And it's another way to, you know, there's so many people that holidays are happy, holidays is a time to celebrate, but there's so many people out there that are going to be celebrating that holiday with somebody that they lost from an impaired driver. Um, so we have that, and we also have a step challenge that's going on through November and December. So, so far we have stepped six million steps to for a safer holiday in Florida. It is a okay. free, it is a free <laughs> challenge that people can join. So you can, um, the link will be here. Um, you can join that challenge. And then also if you happen to fundraise $100, you get, you get a commemorative shirt from the challenge. So it is the state of Florida. It's kind of like a tacky sweater okay. shirt. <laughs> uh, but it also, once you wear it and walk around the neighborhood, it's kind of like you become a poster of a safer holiday because we want your neighbors, we want your family members, we want all to make great decisions. So I encourage everybody to join the step challenge is until December 25th and again it is a free challenge to join and if you happen to fundraise a hundred dollars you get a cool shirt by the <laughs> end of the year all right well I was gonna drunk, drunk driver is doing a lot of great stuff uh, you've changed a lot since the 1980s uh, what can uh, the citizens how can they help Mothers against drunk driver so the easiest thing to do is uh, make that decision every day if you plan if your in plans include alcohol never drive impaired tell that to your friends to your family members and they can al always follow us our Facebook. We have a lot of events coming in 2024. They can support us by attending them. They can support us sharing our social media. So they can always contact us 
um, and we have always volunteers that we need. In 30 seconds, uh, what can the viewers do uh, to help uh, Mothers Against Drunk Drivers? They can help by making a choice to not drive impaired. They can also talk, you know, we are a very small staff in the Florida, but your word can amplify the message of having a safer holiday and never drive impaired. No doubt you heard it. Thanks, Claudia. Thank you. Up next, in our deputy on duty, how we're uncovering hidden evidence to help bring criminals to justice. A deep dive into our role of our forensic analysts. Stay tuned. At the Florida Sheriff's Association, we are able to serve our sheriffs and Floridians thanks to our member support. The FSA Member Perks Program was created to give back to our members for all that they do. Members enjoy savings on restaurants, vacations, golf courses, car rentals, health care, movie tickets, theme parks, online shopping, and more. With over 300,000 offers, you'll always find ways to save. To learn more or to join the Florida Sheriff's Association, visit fsamemberperks.org. On this episode of Deputy on Duty, we take you behind the scenes to explore the critical role of how a civilian works side by side with detectives, solving crimes using some cutting edge technology. So being a civilian in a law enforcement agency full of, of cops, it, it clearly plays, you know, there's an interesting dynamic there. You find a kind of camaraderie with them, even though you don't have a badge and gun, because you work on the same cases, you're able to collaborate and um, really make progress in these cases. And you, you work towards the same goal. Charles Hamilton is a digital forensics analyst assigned to the Leon County Sheriff's Office Internet Crimes Against Children Unit, or ICAC. As part of the ICAC unit, um, we're part of the North Florida ICAC Task Force which is a conglomeration of local agencies throughout North Florida. Um, so we work with FDLE and uh, Homeland Security investigations uh, on a daily basis um, through deconfliction of different cases and uh, collaboration on devices, uh, examinations. His role is one that many people saw portrayed on TV shows like Criminal Minds and CSI, where technology is used to solve crime during a primetime TV hour. So CSI, um, it's funny, in school they actually teach you about the CSI effect, which is people expecting, you know, wonderful, you know, magic to happen when uh, put in the hands of an examiner. Um, but that's not how it works in real life. The biggest difference is timing. In reality, it takes months. Uh, most devices take uh, anywhere from a couple of days examination time to, you know, hundreds of hours of man of work. Digital forensics is like peeling back the layers of a crime, but instead of physical evidence, Hamilton's job deals with a lot of data. He's responsible for extracting, analyzing, and interpreting digital evidence to provide critical leads for our detectives. The biggest misconception is the concept of deleting something. Um, deleting doesn't usually mean it's gone. It just means you can't see it or the user can't see it. Um, so most of the time, deleted things are recoverable. His findings often serve as a linchpin in securing those convictions and bringing perpetrators to justice during a time when technology is constantly changing. You got to learn on the fly constantly. Uh, but there are plenty of investigators that are doing the same thing um, and, you know, you work, you collaborate with them to learn together to figure out what's changed. Hamilton's work underscores the importance of technology in modern crime solving and the challenges continue to grow. There's been plenty times where uh, we search a house and there's just drawers and drawers full of hard drives um, and, you know, these things are just so cheap now that it's easy to have so many um, and it's accessible to everyone. Hamilton says there is an urgent need for young minds to consider careers in cybercrime prevention. You need young people to, to step up and to get into the roles that are necessary for the safety of the community. Hamilton and his colleagues are unsung heroes in the fight against cybercrime. Their work exemplifies the sheriff's office's commitment to staying at the forefront of technology. I've always loved computers and uh, I 
didn't originally want to go into law enforcement, um, but I, I wouldn't want it any other way. I've really fallen in love with uh, the work I do. And to all those inquiring minds, young and old, looking to follow in Hamilton's footsteps, consider a career in cybercrime prevention. You could be the next hero protecting our digital frontier. For more information about careers with LCSO, just visit our website, leoncountyso.com. For Leon County Today, I'm Angela Sherrod. Start your new career as a corrections officer at one of the state's most innovative agencies, the Leon County Sheriff's Office. When I left the academy, my training never stopped. Work with state-of-the-art technology. You can make a lot of money at a very young age. Starting pay is $50,000 a year with amazing benefits. Firearms, taser, driving training. A better work-life balance with more time off. They're going to sponsor you through the academy and pay you while you're there. Join the family. Apply today at LeonCountySO.com. Download the Leon County Sheriff's Office mobile app right now. Our mobile app makes it easier than ever to report a crime and get important safety alerts. You can also see who's been booked at the Leon County Detention Facility and follow reported crimes in your neighborhood, all in one convenient location in the palm of your hands. Download LCSO Connect right now. It's free in the Apple App Store and Google Play by searching LCSO Connect. Welcome back to Leon County today with Sheriff Walt McNeil. Sheriff, uh, hearing from our forensic analysts, uh, they really have a passion for what they do. They absolutely do. And in fact, uh, we can't do the, couldn't do the job we do. Our investigators couldn't do the job they do to solve crimes. It's those analysts that go to those crime scenes, they put the, the pieces of the puzzle together, mm -hmm. assisting the investigators. And oftentimes people don't see that work that goes on behind the scenes. Uh, and they're going out to the field and they go into the, into the morgue, into the, uh, to the labs and sit down and get with that work and analyze that information and then we're able to make arrests out of that and that's, uh, that's crucial to us. And they're, they're perhaps, in addition to our deputy on the road and our investigators in the field, uh, those crime analysts, uh, they call themselves forensic analysis now, but uh, they are, uh, I mean, absolutely critical to our being able to solve crimes in Tallahassee Leon County. Absolutely, very, very important part of the equation. Uh, and then Mothers Against Drunk Driving, you know, it really is astonishing um, with all of the options that are out there that people are still losing their lives uh, to impaired drivers. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm optimistic uh, in some respects. Uh, I'm, I'm just buoyed up by the work that Mothers Against Drunk Drivers are doing and have done since the 1980s, mm -hmm. the progress they've made. But we as a society haven't done the same kind of progress. They are, they are uh, fighting our, our issues in the legislature, trying to get bills passed right. that uh, prohibits people from smoking marijuana, for example, and getting behind the wheel. That's a difficult thing for our deputies on the road, trying to figure out, this person's impaired, but exactly why and how they're impaired. Right. And those, uh, those obstacles still are there for our deputies. And most of the drunk drivers have taken that up as a cause, and they're going to help us in terms of getting some legislation out there that will allow us to keep those persons from getting behind the wheel of a car. Yeah, important message this holiday yeah, season. Absolutely. All right, absolutely. thanks, Sheriff. And thank you all for joining us. We'll see you back here next week.